So welcome to your practice tonight. Um, if you're just popping on, I did put the playlist in the chat group and go ahead and start in child's pose this evening. And once you arrive there, stretch your arms as far forward as you can. And if you prefer to place a block underneath your forehead, then I welcome you to do that. It's really nice to let the forehead connect down onto something to help ease some tension that may or may not be around the neck and shoulders. And also to help ground your thoughts. So I invite you to close your eyes and go inwards. And if you haven't already, begin to deepen your breath. grateful for the blessing of your breath and the blessing of your life, no matter how colorful it may, it may seem in these trying days. And let your breath wash through your body, beginning to clear away a little bit of tension in the body. Perhaps some tension in your mind and perhaps to soften around the heart. And so just a couple more breaths here, establishing a really sweet and easy rhythm of your breath that will be the thread to weave throughout the entire practice. And not only when you're holding a pose like you are here, but also the moments in between. So with your hips still heavy back towards your heels, climb your fingers a little bit further forward to create a little bit more length into your side body. Press down through your palms and on your next inhale, round through your spine like cat pose as you roll up onto all fours. And then as you exhale, come to a neutral spine and curl your toes under. With your arms long and strong, inhale, draw your heart forward, take your gaze up. Then as you exhale, start to stretch your hips back towards your heels as you draw your heart forward. Then release your head down. Inhale, roll up through cat pose. As you exhale, come to cow pose. Heart forward, gaze up, sitting bones up. Exhale, press back to extended child's pose. So we'll flow here. Inhale, come through cow pose. Then as you exhale, or sorry, cat pose. As you exhale, come to cow pose. Pause here for your breath in. And then exhale back to your extended child's pose. So one more like that. Inhale, roll and round up, shoulder blades broad. Exhale, let your belly move down, draw your heart forward, cow pose. Take an inhale here, exhale, press your hips back. So moving along, inhale, roll and round up. Exhale, come to cow pose. Pause here for your breath in, have your shoulder blade down your back. Then as you exhale and start to make your way back to that extended child's pose, start to hover your knees a couple inches from the floor and let your ears fall in between your arms. Press down through the ridge of your palm so that your side body is long like when you were in that extended child's pose. And then on your next inhale, go ahead and make your legs towards straight into your first downward facing dog. And so similar to some of the length that you created in extended child's pose through your side body as you were crawling your fingers forward. Here, they're actively pressing down, particularly through the ridge of your palm so that you can lift your hips further skyward, widen your sitting bones apart, and at the same time, allow your heels to descend down towards the floor. And into the steadiness of the shape, invite that sweet and steady rhythm of your breath that you established at the beginning. And so keeping your feet hip distance apart and parallel. 
Slowly start to walk your hands towards your feet so that you're all the way at the back of your mat. And possibly your fingertips will be on your sticky mat or maybe your palms to your shins. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway up. Exhale, fold into yourself and let your head be heavy. So two more just like that. Inhale, stretch your heart forward, hug your shoulders back. And then exhale, fold back in, pull your belly in and back a little deeper. One more. Inhale deeply. Exhale completely to fold. Press down through your feet. Inhale, rise to stem. Let your tailbone root as your heart and hands lift. Exhale, hinge at your hips, bow forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway up. Exhale, fold back in. Inhale, rise to stand. Take as much space as you can with your body and your breath. Exhale, fold inwards. From here, bend your knees. Inhale, chair pose. So for this variation, keep your knees hip distance apart. Take a big inhale, stretch your arms up, and then as you exhale, sweep your right arm underneath your left so that the backs of your hands or your palms touch. Keeping that space between your knees, inhale, arc up a little bit more, and then exhale, bring your elbows between your knees as you round through your spine like cat pose. Hips stay low, inhale, rise and reach up, exhale to round. So you're sort of moving through cat-cow here, but in chair pose. Inhale, keep your hips low, lift your heart high. Exhale to round in. As you inhale to rise up, just come through center. Exhale, unravel your arms, knees stay bent. Inhale, chair pose, reach up. Exhale, fold forward, long legs, long spine. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, fold into yourself. Bend your knees, inhale, chair pose, reach your arms up. This time as you exhale, take your left arm underneath and find your expression of eagle arms. Inhale, lift your heart, find a little back bend. Exhale, round in, chin to chest, elbows between your knees. Two more just like that. Breathe in and breathe out. And really round for the shoulder blades widen. One more, hips low. Inhale, lift your heart high. Exhale, curl and round into yourself. Knees stay bent. Inhale, come back up through center. Exhale, unravel your arms. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, fold forward, long legs, long spine. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, walk forward to plank pose. Pause here. You can keep your legs long or bring your knees down onto the floor. Pull your hands towards your toes. Take a big, bright breath in, and then as you exhale, slowly lower all the way onto your belly. Once you're down, lift your right leg up, spin your inner thigh to the side, stretch your leg back, and then press it down. Do the same with your left leg lifted up, spin the inner thigh up, stretch your leg back, and then place the tops of your feet to the floor. Fingertips go wide at chest height. Inhale, begin to rise up to cobra pose. Exhale, heart forward and down. So a few more here. Inhale as you rise up. Come up only as high as that your lower back feels supported. And then exhale, see if you can come down with a longer spine. Two more just like that. As you inhale to rise up, your shoulders move back, your throat moves back. Exhale, heart forward and down. One more. Inhale deeply. Exhale completely. At the bottom of your breath, plant your palms beside your ribcage. Curl your toes under, keep your knees down. Take a deep inhale. Exhale, press up onto your tabletop. Inhale to cow pose. Draw your heart forward, look up. Exhale, extended child pose. Hips back towards your heels. Cat pose. Inhale, roll and round up. Exhale, cow pose. Draw your heart forward, sitting bones lift up. Exhale, press back through extended child's pose and at the last moment, lift your knees and make your way to downward facing dog. So we'll hold this one for about three cycles of your breath. And of course, you can always opt for child's pose instead of downward facing dog. 
And there may be a couple vinyasas, and I will guide them, but it's up to you if you want to cycle through. You can always stretch back into down dog and knee you there in a breath. Last cycle here. On your next inhale, rise to your toes, bend your knees, look forward. Exhale, jump or step, step to the top of your mat, your big toes touch. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale to fold back in. Rise to stand. Inhale, come all the way up, full stretch. Exhale, hinge at your hips, bow forward, Uttanasana. Bend your knees, inhale, back to chair pose. This time with your knees and feet together. Then bring your palms to touch. And you're going to bend your elbow so that your palms move down by the nape of your neck. And then see if you can walk your elbows a little bit closer in towards one another. And then keeping your front ribs in, see if you can lift your chin away from your chest. And then let your breath swell through your torso. Have a little peek down to make sure that you can still see your big toes. And on your next exhale, see if you can sink down a little bit deeper. Soften through your forehead and relax through your jaw. One last breath here. So your knees will remain bent. On your next inhale, stretch your arms to the sky. Exhale, fold forward, long legs, long spine. On your next inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, left leg steps back. Plant your palms. Inhale, three-legged down dog, right leg up. Roll your right hip on top of your left. Take a few breaths here, noticing that your weight is still equal through both hands. And as your right knee points up a little higher to the sky, soften your left heel closer to the earth. Take one more full bright breath in, and a long breath out. On your next inhale, square your hips right leg long. Exhale, draw your knee to your nose and pause. Look forward as you breathe in, then step forward as you breathe out. Place your back knee down to the floor. Inhale, rise and reach both arms up to the sky. As you exhale, option one, your right hand will come down to your hip. Option two, if you have a block, you can place your right hand on your block, or your fingertips will come down onto your sticky mat. So whichever expression you have with your arms, stand really steady and clear into your right foot and pull your right hip back, left hip forward, so that both of your hip bones remain pointing forward. And then as you contract a little bit more into your right side body, open up through your left side. Staying close to that sweet and steady rhythm of your breath that you established at the beginning. Continue to hug your inner thighs to the midline. And on your next inhale, take both arms all the way up overhead. As you exhale, bring your fingertips on either side of your right foot as you lift your back knee. Inhale, reach your right arm up to the sky and pause here for a couple breaths. Always an option to lower your left knee to the floor. But with every inhale, aim to lengthen the crown of your head forward. And then as you exhale, keep revolving your torso towards the right. With every inhale, grow long, and with every exhale, twist deep. Last breath here. On your next inhale, lower your right fingertips to the floor, look forward. Exhale, step your left foot to meet your right foot at the top of your mat, fold in and release. Halfway lift, inhale. Step your right foot back as you exhale, plant your palms. Inhale, left leg reaches up, roll your left hip on top of your right, and take a few good breaths here. So like you did on the other side, establish the weight equally into both hands. Then encourage your right hip to move back so that your right side body is getting long, maybe just as much as your left side. And then as you weight down equal through both hands, on your next inhale, square your hips, draw your left leg to straight. Exhale, draw your knee to your nose and pause. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, step forward, lower your right knee down. Inhale, rise and reach both arms up. 
On this side, as you exhale, same options, left hand to hip, to a block or down onto your sticky mat, and then arc over to the left side of your mat. And as you arc over, think to reach almost for the back left corner of your mat. So you're creating a lot of space throughout your entire right side body. And then move the breath deeper within. Continue to draw your left hip back, right hip forward, and hug the inner thighs to your midline. Take one last big breath in. Perhaps come down deeper as you breathe out. And inhale, take both arms all the way up. As you exhale, place your fingertips on either side of your left foot as you lift your right knee. Inhale, take your left arm up to the sky and then breathe here. As you did on the left side, with every inhale, the crown of your head draws forward. And as you exhale, belly to spine and keep twisting, twisting, twisting. And even though there's a slight compression in your abdominal area, perhaps as it rests against your left thigh, remember that your breath moves into your side waist and also to your back body. So let the breath balloon through your torso. Inhale, left arm reaches up. Exhale, lower your fingertips to the floor. Look forward, take a breath in. Exhale, step your right foot to meet your left foot. Fold forward and release. Halfway lift as you breathe in. Bow and fold into yourself as you breathe out. Rise to stand this time. Inhale, come all the way up, full stretch. Exhale, bring your hands to heart, mountain pose. Inhale, lift your heart into your hands. Exhale, release your arms. Press down through your feet. Inhale, stretch for the sky. Exhale, hinge at your hips, bow forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, lift and lengthen, pause. Step your left leg back, plant your palms. Inhale, right leg up, roll your hips open. One cycle of your breath here. Again, weight equal through both hands. Inhale, square your hips, right leg long. Exhale, draw your knee to your nose and pause. Look forward, breathe in. Step forward, breathe out. Crescent pose this time. Inhale to rise and reach up. And then stay for your exhale. Take one more big breath in. Open it up to warrior two. You might need to widen your stance a little bit. And then send your arms wide out to shoulder height. Take a full deep inhale. Perhaps lunge deeper as you exhale. Flip your right palm to the sky. Inhale, exalted warrior, reach up and back. As you exhale, extended side angle. Forearm to your thigh as you reach your left arm overhead. Or feel free to take the hand to the inside or the outside of your front foot. So either placement will work for today's practice. From the outer edge of your back foot, Feel for the leg through your entire left side body as you actively reach out through your fingertips. So we're here for three more breaths. You have the option to stay in the variation that you're in, or on your next exhale, float your right arm parallel to your left. Remain in the fullness of your breath, whichever expression of the pose you're in. Keep spinning your right rib cage to the sky. And continue to keep your right knee bent. Inhale, rise to warrior two. As you exhale, windmill your palms on either side of your right foot as you lift your left heel. Take an inhale, look forward. Exhale, step your left foot forward and fold into yourself. Halfway lift, breathe in. Step back with your right foot as you breathe out, plant your palms. Inhale, left leg up. Exhale, roll your hips open to your three-legged down dog, and one breath here. Full inhale, and deep exhale. Inhale, square your hips, left leg long. Exhale, draw your knee to your nose and pause. Look forward, inhale, step forward as you exhale. The back leg stays lifted as you inhale, rise to crescent pose. And then exhale to settle in. One more full inhale, stretch up, open it up to warrior two, spin your back foot to the floor. Take a big breath in, and then press down equally through both feet as you breathe out. 
left palm to the sky, inhale, reach up and back. Stay for your breath out. Belly to spine, inhale, pass through center. Exhale, extended side angle, reach your right arm overhead. And the same options for your left arm, apply forearm to the thigh, or hand to the inner or the outer foot. And even if you're gonna lift your left arm, pause here for just a moment to establish the connection from the outer edge of your back foot through your whole right side body as you actively stretch out through your fingertips. So imagine as though someone was holding your right wrist and pulling it away from you to create space into your right side body. And then stay as you are, or as you exhale, float your left arm parallel to your right. And as you continue to stand clearly, equally into both of your feet, with every inhale to lengthen, and as you exhale, you're spinning your left rib cage to the right. One more breath. Keep your left knee bent. Inhale, rise to warrior two. Exhale, windmill your palms to the floor. This time, step to plank. Pause here for your breath in. Exhale, lower halfway or all the way to the floor. Inhale, lift your chest over or upward facing dog. Exhale, press back, downward facing dog or child's pose. Three breaths here. And as you take a moment of pause here, reestablish your connection to that smooth and steady rhythm of your breath. Last cycle. So from here, as you inhale, Send your right leg high to the sky. As you exhale, draw your knee to your nose and pause. Look forward as you breathe in. Step forward as you breathe out. Spin your back foot to the floor. Warrior one. Inhale, begin to rise and reach up. So this time, doing your best to square your hips towards the front of your mat. So like that low lunge, pull your right hip back and the outer left hip forward. Keeping both arms reaching up alongside your ears. Soften the front ribs in so that it's almost like you feel like you've got a corset on, cinching everything in. Take a full bright breath in to reach up. Then lunge a little deeper as you breathe out. Big inhale, stretch your arms to the sky. Then as you exhale, open up your arms to shoulder heights with your left arm underneath your right arm and take eagle arms. Inhale, lift your back heel up off the floor, and then stay nice and low, stay your gaze, and then shift onto your right leg, wrap your left leg up and over for eagle pose. Garudasana. As you hug your inner thighs towards the midline, let your tailbone move down towards the floor and squeeze into your glutes. And as you slide your shoulders down your back, Continue to lift, lift your elbows up and press your forearms away. And just like an eagle would fly in the sky, keep the loftiness of your breath. Press through the inner right foot. You're going to keep your arms all twisty. On your next inhale, rise to stand, draw your left knee to your chest. And then as you exhale, pass your way through warrior three as you begin to fold forward into standing splits. And you may want to keep your eagle arms for a few breaths, or you totally may not, and I get it. So fingertips to the floor. Whichever option you're in, keep actively reaching your left leg up. If you still have your eagle arms, gently release, and then relax your head down. Option to stay here or wrap your right hand behind your ankle. Breathing there, or perhaps your left hand as well. Three more breaths. If you have your hands behind your ankle, release your fingertips to the floor. Take a big inhale. As you exhale, step back into your runner's lunge. Plant your palms. Take an inhale, look forward. Step your right foot back to plank pose as you exhale. Pause 
here for your breath in. Chaturanga or to your belly, breathe out. Cobra or up dog, big breath in. Full breath out, downward facing dog and pause. Take one full deep inhale and a long exhale. Inhale, send your left leg high. Exhale, draw your knee to your nose. Look forward, breathe in. Step forward, breathe out. Here, but draw some one. Root your back foot down. And then inhale, root to rise and stand tall. Allow your chin to be parallel to the floor. And then on this side, since we went through all of the alignment on the other side, I invite you to close your eyes and go inwards. That's the path of yoga is to go deeper within the self. And as you go inwards, just starting in a physical way, notice that your feet are pressing down equally through the left and the right. Sense that your shoulders are stacked above your hips and your head above your heart. And then feel that sweet and steady rhythm of your breath. And then notice one other thing that's happening on the inside. Gently open your eyes as you inhale to reach up. Exhale, take your arms wide, sweep your right arm underneath your left arm for eagle arms. Inhale, lift your back heel up, lunge low. Then as you exhale, fly forward, wrap your right leg over top your left leg for eagle pose, Garudasana. And as you let your eyes be steady to one spot. When we have these particular focuses with the eyes, it's called the drishti. And when we steady our eyes to one spot, it helps to slow the mind. And it signals to the nervous system to also slow. So keep the eyes steady and the breath steady. Even now, as you inhale, begin to rise up, draw your right knee to your chest. Then as you exhale, without crashing into a wall, <laughs> begin to pass through warrior three as you teeter-totter forward with your heart and up with your right inner thigh as you make your way to standing splits. And once again, perhaps keeping your eagle arms for a few breaths, or not. <laughs> but keep stretching your right leg high in the sky. If you do still have eagle arms, you may keep them or unravel and relax your head down. Use your belly pulling into your spine to deepen the fold. Then maybe wrap your left hand behind your ankle and maybe your right. Breathing here so that the only connection to the earth is the sole of your left foot. Then imprint the sole of your right foot into the sky. Last cycle here. If you're still holding your ankle, unravel your fingertips to the floor. Take a big breath in. Step your right leg back as you breathe out. Plant your palms. Look forward. Inhale. Step to plank as you exhale. Inhale here. Chaturanga. Exhale. Cobra or up dog. Big inhale. Lift your chest. And then full exhale. Lift your hips. Pause here. And as you take a pause in this downward facing dog, just notice the effects of that last little sequence from warrior one to eagle pose and standing splits. Continue to press the bridge of your palm down and forward. Create more space through your spine. Widen your sitting bones apart and let your heels descend to the floor. Two more cycles of your breath. Steady gaze, steady breath. From here, as you inhale, send your left leg up. Exhale, step your left foot forward. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, step your right foot to meet your left foot and fold in to release. Halfway lift, inhale, bow back in as you exhale. 
Rise to stand. Inhale, come all the way up for your tailbone as you lift your heart and hands. Exhale, pull your hands to heart and arrive in mountain pose. Take a big inhale, lift your heart to your hands, and then exhale to release your arms. Okay, so this is where a strap might be useful. So I'm going to demonstrate with a strap, and I'm going to face you for a couple moments here. So standing at the front edge of your mat, if you have your strap, just toss it over one shoulder, it doesn't matter which one, and then place your hands to your hips. Keep your right foot forward, and then step your left leg back about three feet or so, so that both your hip bones still point forward. And then inhale, reach your arms up. Keep your left arm up and bend at the elbow. Place your hand onto your elbow to draw your arm further down your back. I'm just going to turn around for a moment. So from here, you may grab your strap and then start to take your right arm behind you and hold the strap, or perhaps you may not need it, and interlock your fingers at the base of your heart. So from here, inhale to lift your chest, root your tailbone down, and then as you exhale, pull your right hip back as you lengthen the crown of your head forward and then down. With every inhale, aim to lengthen through your spine. And then as you exhale, perhaps fold in a little deeper. And this is, I always find it such a tricky pose because even though two feet are on the floor, there's so much core strength that's required to remain balanced here. So keep pressing deeply into the outer edge of your left foot. Take one more full deep breath in and fold in as you breathe out. Keep your bind, inhale, slowly begin to rise up. And then as you exhale, release just your arms. Place your right hand to your hip. Inhale, stretch your left arm up. Revolve triangle pose as you exhale, pull your right hip back, reach forward. At this time, palm to your shin, or fingertips to the inner or the outer foot. Deep inhale, lift your heart, and then exhale, revolve to the right. Option to keep your hand on your hip, or sometimes I always keep my hand there, not always, often, to encourage the length in the right side body, or if it's available to you, go ahead and stretch your right arm up to the sky, and then if you're stable, take your gaze up to it as well. And just like our other twist, with every inhale, draw the crown of your head forward, and then as you exhale, keep twisting, twisting, twisting. Last breath here. Then inhale, lower your right hand down, pause. Exhale, place both hands to your hips. Belly to spine, inhale, very slowly begin to rise up. And then as you exhale, step your foot forward at the top of your mat. So other side. Press down onto your hips, inhale, stand tall. Keep your left foot forward, step your right foot back. And I should also mention, like classically, the alignment here is heel to heel, but it's a little bit more stable and accessible to keep your feet at hip distance apart so that your right foot is gonna be angled in at about 45. But it kind of doesn't matter where your back foot is so long as your hips are pointing forward and the back knee is happy as can be. Inhale, reach your arms up. Keep your right arm up, bend at the elbow, and draw your hand down your back. Breathing there, or start to take your left hand behind you. Look to interlock your fingers or hold the strap. Root your tailbone down, inhale, lift your heart. And then as you exhale, pull your left hip back as you begin to draw forward and down through your heart. And indeed, this is a forward fold. So you are literally folding into yourself. So wherever you're at today, meet yourself there. All the parts in body, breath, mind, and heart. Keep your belly drawing into your spine. On your next inhale, very slowly begin to rise all the way up. And then as you exhale, release your arms. Place your left hand to your hip. Inhale, switch your right arm up. 
Use your hand on your hip as a self-assist and draw your left hip back. Keep the length into your whole right side body as you lower your palm down to your shin. Maybe fingertips to the inner or outer foot and wicker without your block. Then big breath in the crown of your head forward, then twist to the left as you exhale. And once again, you can encourage your left hip to hug back as you keep your hand hooked in there, or feel free to stretch your left arm up to the sky. And then if you're stable, start to take your gaze all the way up to your left hand. But keep drawing your left hip back, and with every inhale, aim for your spine to grow longer. And then as you exhale, pull your belly in and twist a little bit deeper. Let your breath balloon through your torso. Last cycle here. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, lower your left hand down and place your hands to your hips. Slowly, belly to spine, inhale to rise on up. And then as you exhale, step your feet together. If your strap happens to still be with you, go ahead and release it to the top of your mat. Bring your palms together at heart center and return to mountain pose. Inhale, lift your heart into your hands. Exhale, release your arms. Press down through your feet. Inhale to stretch and reach up. Exhale, hinge at your hips. Back forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, draw the light of your heart forward, pause. As you exhale, step your right leg back, plant your palms. Inhale, step your left leg back. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale to lift your heart. Exhale, lift your hips and pause here. So three breaths in your downward facing dog, or go ahead and come to child's pose. And use this opportunity of moving into stillness in the outer body to slow and steady your breath and perhaps to slow and steady your thoughts. One more cycle of your breath. Continue to root down through your palms. On your next inhale, ripple forward to your high plank pose. And then as you exhale for five counts, lower to your belly for five, four, tone your legs, three, two, one and a half, one, and zero. Very good. Once you're down, place the tops of your feet to the floor as you stretch your legs back. Keep your palms beside your rib cage. Anchor your tailbone down and firm your legs so that even though the tops of your feet stay down, your kneecaps will likely lift away from the floor. With your belly drawing in, you're going to keep your forehead down. Take a big breath in, and as you exhale, just lift your hands up, but keep your elbows bent at that 90 degree angle. Either keep the forehead down or on your next inhale, curl up, just using the strength of your back body. So your hands are floating. Smooth, easy breath. Then breathing there with your legs strong and straight, possibly lift your legs. Keep hugging your elbows in towards the midline. With your belly to your spine, inhale, lift your chest, lift your legs. And then exhale, lower everything down. So placing everything down just like at the beginning as we started that variation of cobra into locust. Take a breath. Anchor your tailbone down. This time your palms are going to stay down, but I want you to remember how much your arms and your shoulders were working when they were not connected to anything. On your next inhale, with the strength of your back body, rise to a low cobra pose. So once again, your legs are reaching back, your kneecaps are likely not on the floor. You're welcome to remain here. And this is a better option if you're more interested to strengthen the back body or work on your core. Or from here, keeping your pubic bone down, you're gonna curl up a little bit higher. So in this variation, my elbows are bent, my shoulders are drawing back, and I'm squeezing the muscles of my leg, my arms and my legs, 
but the arms specifically like when the arms were hovering in the previous variation. Or curl up a little bit more, hug the elbows in. So the belly to the spine, the tailbone down, you should feel this in the middle part of your spine, but certainly not the lower back. So if you do, perhaps lower down a little bit more. Two more big breaths here. Keep hugging your elbows and shoulders down your back. Take one more full deep breath in, and then exhale, lower all the way down. Keep your knees onto the floor, curl your toes under, take an inhale, exhale, press up onto all fours. Inhale to cow pose. Exhale, press back into that extended child's pose. Inhale, roll left through cat pose. Exhale, belly down, heart forward, cow pose. Inhale here. Exhale, make your way through the extended child's pose and then lift your knees downward facing dog. Just one full deep inhale and a long exhale. Inhale, send your right leg high. As you exhale, step your right foot to the outside of your right hand for lizard pose. So option to keep your back leg long, but in about two breaths, we'll all bring our knee down to the floor, but if you wanna make your way now, you're welcome to. And you can stay on your hands or lower down onto your forearms. Encourage your heart to move forward rather than down so that we're moving away from a cat spine and it's moving towards further extension. If you haven't already, go ahead and lightly place your left knee down. Smooth out your breath. And so from here, you're welcome to stay or to add on. Inhale, stretch your right arm forward, reach it up and back. Start to squeeze your heel towards your hip and catch the outer edge of your left foot. Then two options, you can either pull your heel into your body or press it further away. You can keep your torso facing down towards the earth or open it up into another twist. So a lot of options here. I invite you to go to the place that facilitates your breath, the place that makes it easier to breathe. And in that way, perhaps the expression of the pose that invites a deeper sense of space. And then wherever that place is for you, take two more very generous breaths. So if you are holding your back foot, very slowly release. Bring your hands to the inner right foot. Then wiggle your right foot to the midline. Come onto your fingertips, take a deep inhale, and then press back into Ardha Hanumanasana, half splits as you exhale. So actively dig your right heel into the floor, and like you've done in so many shapes in this practice, hug your right hip back. And as you do that, keep a little bend into your right knee. Take a big, bright inhale, and then bow into yourself as you exhale. And you can either hold here in steadiness or keep that pulse going with every inhale to lengthen and then exhale to bow. So whichever is gonna serve the inner body the most, whether it's to continue pulsing or to embody stillness, they're both great options. So what is it that you need in this moment? On your next inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, step your foot to the floor, plant your palms, lift your back knee. Inhale, look forward, step to plank pose as you exhale. Inhale deeply, chaturanga or to your belly as you exhale completely. Inhale, lift your heart, over or up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Other side, inhale, left leg high. As you exhale, step your left foot to the outside of your left hand. Keep your back leg long for just a couple breaths. Hug your right hip forward, left hip back. Welcome to stay on the hands or to come down onto your forearms. And then softening the space at the back of your heart. 
If you haven't already, lightly place your right knee to the floor and breathe here. Should also mention if your knee and foot want to turn out to the side, it's totally fine to point your foot out, but just have a little look so that the center of your knee is aligned to the center of your foot. And then breathe in here, or to go a little bit deeper, reach your left arm forward as you inhale, and a big back stroke like you're in the pool, and then squeeze your heel up towards your hip to catch the outer edge of your right foot. And then maybe pulling your heel closer to your body, or perhaps pressing it away. And then again, options, shoulders can remain pointing down towards the earth, or perhaps opening it up into a twist. I encourage you to do the same option that you chose on the other side, unless a deeper and different variation is in greater service of this side. And really, I think that's the advanced part of the practice is being sensitive to listen what your body really needs and then to honor that. So go to that expression for two more breaths. For those of you holding your back foot, very slowly release. Take your hands to the floor and rise up. My precise alignment cue, a wiggle. Wiggle your left foot back to the midline. Take an inhale, look forward, and then exhale, press your hips back. Dig your left heel in, inhale to lengthen, and then exhale to bow. And again, does it serve you to keep that pulse going with every inhale to lift your chest? and then exhale to fold in? Or is it in greater service to be in stillness? So remembering that this is your practice, and as always, I invite you to take both what you want and what you need from your practice. This is your time. Last breath. On your next inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, step your left foot to the floor, plant your palms. Inhale, look forward. Step to plank pose as you exhale. Pause here for your breath in. Exhale, chaturanga or to your belly. Cobra or up dog, inhale, lift your chest, shoulders back, throat back. Exhale, lift your hips. Take a pause here, one full deep inhale. And then as you exhale, lower down to your knees. Keep your hips above your knees and then walk your arms forward for puppy pose. Either your forehead might come down to the floor or maybe your chin and your heart. So it's similar to the extended child's pose that you started with at the beginning of your practice, except this time you've got your hips above your knees so you bring this opening deeper into your shoulders and into your heart. Soften your bra. From here as you inhale, rise up. Start to walk your hands in all the way so that you're sitting on your heels. So for this next shape, There'll be quite a few options. We're moving into headstand today. So a couple different, different options for headstand. And first and foremost, if you're dealing with some interesting tension or injuries around your neck and shoulders, one, keep your head off the floor and it'll be more of a dolphin expression. So two options are gonna be headstand A, which is the classical grip of interlocking your fingers where you wrap the baby finger down in. As you place your elbows onto the floor, you'll cradle your head as you place the crown of your head to the floor, and then you'll lift your knees and walk your feet in. For those of you working with neck injuries, you'll remain here. It's the same setup, but the only difference is, is that your head is not on the floor. And then breathing there, or perhaps lift your legs up towards the sky and breathe here. So from the core of your heart, you're pressing down your arms into the earth as you actively reach your toes up to the sky. So that's option one. 
Option two, I'm not sure which variation it's called, but kind of I call it I Dream of Genie, where you'll grab a hold of your forearms. So it's kind of like, I was gonna say if you belly dance, but I don't know if you do that belly dancing, but when I think of I Dream of Genie, this is the grip, so we'll go with it. So you'll hold onto just above your elbow. You'll bring your elbows onto the floor, and then your forehead is gonna to touch onto your forearm. So you're gonna lift your hips and then your head will come to the crown, of, the crown of your head, excuse me, will come down onto the floor. Then draw your shoulders down your back, lift your hips and walk in. Then maybe lift up one leg and then maybe lift up the other. So whichever option you're working with here is headstand A, or the I dream of genie, or dolphin pose actively recruit the muscles of your upper back, like in that cobra pose where your arms were lifting. Hug the shoulder blades together. And whichever option you're in, smooth out your breath. Four more cycles. So the gaze is steady and the breath is steady. No matter which expression you're in, keep pressing down your arms into the earth. And very slowly, belly to spine, float your legs down towards the floor. Once, once they arrive, bring your knees down to the floor, hips towards your heels, and then release your arms alongside your body for child's pose. So you really let the shoulders kind of slump forward. And as you started at the beginning of your practice with your forehead on your mat, let that connection ground your thoughts. With your belly to your spine, inhale, slowly roll up one vertebrae at a time. And then exhale, gently place your palms onto your lap and close your eyes. Just one full bright breath in. Open your mouth, sigh it out as you let it go. Lean over to one side and sweep your legs forward. Have your feet at the front edge of your mat. Reach your arms forward as you breathe in and then slowly uncurl yourself all the way down onto your mat. Keep the inner feet and the inner knees connecting. Once your shoulders arrive down, let your arms come alongside your body. And then step, step your feet so they are underneath your knees. Lift your chin away from your chest and on your next inhale, lift your hips into bridge pose. Interlock your fingers underneath you. So we've done a lot of work into the shoulders and the hips, so you're well prepared for wheel pose or Bhadanarasana. So if that pose is calling to you instead of bridge pose, plant your hands underneath your shoulders, draw your shoulders down your back, and then as you inhale, lift your hips. So it's not a long hold tonight, just three more breaths wherever you're at. Returning to that sweet, steady rhythm of your breath that you established at the beginning. For those of you in wheel pose, bring your chin to your chest, lower to your shoulders, and then everybody lower your hips. Pause here as you breathe in. Keep your feet on the ground as you breathe out. Inhale, take your right leg up. Cross your ankle on top of your thigh and reach through the window of your legs. And then like in all of those cow poses that you've practiced already, find that slight anterior tilt of your pelvis so that once you hug your left knee in, there's still a little bit of space underneath your lower back. And as you keep the integrity of the natural curve of your spine, you'll feel the love in your outer right hand. And I invite you to close your eyes and soften into your breath. And 
and start to relax the muscles in your face. Hug your knee a little closer into your chest. And if you can, keep your eyes closed as you release your legs and then switch sides. So your left leg will reach up, flex your foot as you cross it over your ankle and then reach through the window of your legs as you guide your right knee towards your right shoulder. And if you did do that motion with your eyes closed, just take a moment to acknowledge that you actually did that and to appreciate that you did not need your eyes to see where your legs needed to go. You knew. And I think part of this practice is cultivating that inner knowing. Perhaps it's more about feeling with your eyes and seeing with your heart. Perhaps hug your right knee in a little closer. I invite you to continue to keep your eyes closed as you slowly release and uncross your legs. And once your feet arrive onto your sticky mat, let your knees butterfly wide into Sutta Baddha Pranasana. Roll your shoulders underneath you and then place your palms wherever it feels the most supportive for your body in this moment. Wherever you are in the cycle of your breath, exhale and empty your breath completely. And then once you think you've emptied the breath, exhale even more and pull your belly in, empty it all out. Then full deep inhale, breath for one. Inhale, two. Inhale, three. Keep inhaling, breathe in. Let the breath come all the way underneath your collarbones. Inhale, exhale, open your mouth, release, and relax. And feel for the reverberation of the release of your breath. A trickle through your whole body. And you're welcome to stay in this shape. If it does not feel entirely at ease, go ahead and slide your legs forward for Shavasana. Or if you prefer, Make your way into a tall seat for a seated meditation for your closing shape. But whichever shape you've chosen, let your outer body be still. We're not here for long. as you practice stillness in the outer body. It's like it rolls the red carpet for your inner body to also move towards stillness. that stillness, there is peace. And one of the treasures of the practice is remembering where that treasure is. So it's like you are your own treasure chest and all of the gems, the riches of the world are within. And so as we move through this practice, removing the layers of tension, and we come back to that center point of stillness within, 
And in many ways, it's this practice of remembrance. And everything is yours, and it is within. to remain exactly as you are for as long as is needed or necessary in this moment. Otherwise, gently fold your palms together in front of your heart, whether you're seated or on your back. And press your thumbs into your chest to see if you can tap into the rhythm of your heart. The beat of your heart is the beat of your life. So as you feel into the pulse of your heart and the pulse of your life, feel for also the wave of your breath, for the vitality of your life energy that surfs along the current of your breath and let it carry you always in the direction of your heart. Namaste.